What's good, y'all? It's Ross back at again with another video. So, we're going to check out some of the Joe Rogan, Hulk Hogan clips. Uh, I know I asked on, um, I want to say, um, a couple days ago, I checked out a video by uh, Wrestling Gifts, and he was talking about um, just some of the stuff that uh, Hulk Hogan was saying on Joe Rogan's podcast. I asked you guys if you wanted me to check out some of the clips, and you guys said... Uh, a lot of you guys said y'all definitely wanted me to check check out some of the clips so that's what i'm gonna do and really get a um a better understanding of what the hell hulk hogan has been talking about on this uh podcast on joe rogan's podcast you guys wanted it so that's what i'm here to do we're gonna get right into this one this should be a very interesting one stole all the famous stuff i did i yeah i stole all the same uh, famous stuff i did in the ring this actually does sound a little bit more believable for something that hulk hogan would have did in the past let's check this one out i'm in the, I'm in the ring with kurt angle and we go squirrel, he goes down that amateur stance, his eyes roll back in his head like a shark. <laughs> I'm looking at him going, brother? Brother? brother. <laughs> and so when I first started working with him, I mean, you're, you're supposed to make, you're supposed to, you know, I work with a one-man gang a certain way, I work with Piper a certain way, people work with Hulk Hogan a certain way, there's a certain protocol to set a storyline up. You know, well, Kurt Angle's just coming at me and taking me down and going behind me and yoking my shit up every night <laughs> it's this is going on for like three or four nights in a row and i'm like i know he's kind of like green he's just getting started and he's got that amateur wrestling mindset yeah. and if you can't break him with that he's not going to draw any money i mean as soon as brock got that out of his head he drew nothing but money so kurt's coming to me kurt's coming to me. i finally had a sense of brother what is your deal brother <laughs> I said, i'm here to make money i'm here to make a living i said what's going on with you man why the first five or six minutes you're trying to grind me out here, you know? Well, Vince told me to screw you. I said, oh, really? Vince told you to do that? I said, I can't wait to get a hold of Vince now. Oh. You know, Vince put it in Kurt's ear when you're on these house shows with Hogan and nobody sees you, you're not on TV, go out and grind his ass, you know? So that was a big thing for Vince. Oh, wow. You know, if I was wrestling San Antonio tonight with no cameras, he'd sit Kurt Angle on me for the first five or six minutes. Oh, but wow. That was the reason. Just for fun, just ah, a joke. Because it's fucking Vince, that's why. <laughs> Go give him some shit. <laughs> because there's no cameras. Back then at the house shows, I mean, it wasn't really cameras like that, other than like maybe, you know, Polaroids, but not everybody just had cameras like that at them house shows. Not like it is today. If you do a house show, you're liable to get recorded for some stuff. You know what I'm saying? But back then, it wasn't like that. So you can have guys out there doing stuff that they normally wouldn't do on live television. So yeah, because so we all we all we would all do that shit to each other. It's just a normal <laughs> wrestling rib, you know. Kurt Angle's neck looks like a waist. Yeah, it's like a normal person. Ridiculous. Waist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his he's a monster, man. He, he just he, has both of his knees done, you know. Yeah, I would. I was gonna ask, like, he must have experienced a ton of injuries, right? Yeah, good guy though, brother. Really good guy. I mean, so he had knee replacements. Yeah. <sighs> Matt Sarah just had one of those. And it's crazy, bro. Kurt's body has been through the ringer. That's why much respect to Kurt Angle as well. He's just been through so much physically <laughs> when it comes to the neck surgeries, the probably the back, the, obviously the knees. He's just done so much and put his body through the ringer for our entertainment. It's it's crazy, man. Some of the things that you do, like the hand of the ear and all that. Yeah. Uh, was that Vince or you, or you guys think of this stuff together? No, that was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> that was stolen. Well, there you go. He's telling the truth. And uh, once again, we've had this conversation with some people being like, oh, obviously, LA Knight, he's ripping off Stone Cold and The Rock. Once again, your favorites have gotten something that they've done in the ring from somebody else. A lot of them have, 90% of them have so if that's the case man some of y'all favorites some of the legends you got to give them criticism too if we're going to do that it's a revolving door in wrestling I mean, yeah. well um this guy named austin idol um yeah he's he's another guy that looks like flair just like flair almost and um i was in i was in dothan alabama one night and i saw him just do this 
and it was louder than any reaction he got from the whole match. I saw him, I said, oh, that's kind of interesting. So I just kind of like, oh, I wound yeah. it up and started going with it and just place blue, you know. <laughs> and then when I'm, on, when I'm down and they lift my arm once, somebody's getting to sleep and they lift my arm twice. Yeah. And then I lift my arm the third time and I put my arm and I go, Ch -ch 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 -ch. stole that too from Dusty Rhodes. Yeah. I saw him do that when I was a kid. Um, How about the Hey Brother? That was mine. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> but, but anyway. Tony's excited. Say your prayers, take your vitamins. That was mine. Nice. The, th the shirt tear, well, that was an accident. I was in uh, the Rosemont Horizon, and I had, once again, a six-man tag. And, uh, <laughs> Even back then, you couldn't avoid the six-man tag. <laughs> Even today, we still get the six-man tag. <laughs> That's the main event. Oh, I know who it was. I was in there with, uh, God, who was I in there with? Jerry Blackwell. So a couple guys. All three guys were playing the Sheiks. I can't remember what the hell it was. And I was in the ring with these two guys, Greg Gagne, who was the promoter's son, and Jim Brunzel. I'm standing in the middle of the ring, and they just reached up and ripped my shirt off me. Each guy grabbed my shirt and ripped it, and the place went crazy. I went, oh, shit, that works. Hmm. You know? And plus, I get tired of carrying on that big-ass robe and stuff, hip carry an extra bag at the airport so t-shirts i'm in you know so different things like that you know the hulkamania thing of course there was beetle mania you know and then all of a sudden that guy that did the ear thing also i heard him say idol mania and you know do this with his face because he's a good looking guy austin i don't i heard that idol mania mm. <laughs> <laughs> that when, <laughs> when hulk hulk hit you with the mm. You know he's about to lose your gimmick. He's about to take something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hmm. That's interesting. Oh, uh, it all worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Do you shit. like doing the other stuff too, like movies and things on TV shows and things along those lines? I used to, but no, not no. anymore. I, uh, I I don't know how many. I, I don't know if I've done. 15 or 17 little low budget kids movies or had cameos and. <laughs> You've done, you know, done a lot of I've done three appearances movies in movies. Lonnie Anderson and Jim Barney, Muffets, three, High Noon at Mega Mountain, where I played Dave Dragon, the superhero. I've done Gremlin movies. I've done... Baywatch? Bay, oh, God, yeah. I was partners with the Baywatch guys. <laughs> yeah, I've done, you know, done different Tony things. has followed your career very closely. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's the thing was, it was the process. It's like when I first got with Vince, we took off, we did a, a wrestling movie called No Holds Barred. And uh, Tiny Lester, uh, you know, yeah. he was in it with me, and great guy, man. I love him to death. And uh, we just, it, but the thing was, other than that first wrestling movie that I did with Vince, I started doing a bunch of other movies. I did the first couple mov movies that New Line Cinema ever did. Uh, Damn. Suburban Commando and Mr. Nanny. It's the first two movies I ever did. And then that guy, um, Jordan Belford. Gave me money to do a couple of movies that Wolf of Wall Street guy. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. If you pull up like uh, Santa with Muscles, you can see him producer credit. You know? Wow! So Didn't he gave that. me money to do Santa with Muscles and another movie. But I, I did like. Did you get a chance to talk to that guy? No, no, no I never did. He, uh, no, I take that back. I did meet him one time. I met him one time at the Grand Havana Room, and um, with Brian and Stan Schuster, who were running the Grand Havana Room. In Beverly Hills, I didn't know who he was, and I was talking to him. And they said, oh, "This is the guy that put the money up." And I did meet him, but you know, that was the only time I didn't have a conversation. That's crazy, man. He met the Wolf of Wall Street and uh, put him in a movie. He's like, hey, you know, he produced it. You know, saying want to get you in the movie. That's crazy. Did not know that. So some of these are actually uh quite quite interesting. I haven't really <laughs> sensed any type of uh lies being told all right we're gonna get into this one right here man the night ho hogan witnessed a murder in wwe now this should be very interesting let's check this one out so after i got in and i figured out all these territories you, you know like i went to uh minnesota and russell then i went to north florida the fuller territory which is p cola and all through mobile alabama and birmingham that small territory i went to memphis and worked for lawler and jerry jarrett for a while but then when I went to work for Vince Jr. and I went back after being fired and having my first run in New York, when I went back in 84 to beat the Iron Sheik, Vince wanted to cross all, the imag all those imaginary boundaries, you know? And I went, wow, this is gonna be dangerous. <laughs> so Vince says, are you up for it? I said, yeah, I'll do it. 
And so Vince stayed in, in Connecticut in Greenwich in the office. And, you know, then I was booked in Lafayette, Louisiana. We pump our signal in there for like eight weeks. You know, prime example is Kansas City. I don't know if you ever heard of a wrestler named Harley Race. Yeah, of course. NWA champion, tougher than hell, meaner than a snake. Great guy, though, okay? We pump the signal into Kansas City for eight weeks. And Harley Race has been there like 18 years. He was the NWA champion. I'm the champion of the world, and he's a very proud and mean son of a bitch. And all of a sudden, here comes this blonde-haired idiot from New York going, hey, I'm the WWF champion. I'm the <laughs> WWE champion. I'm coming to Kemper Arena. And we're pumped the signal. So I come. I fly into town. And I show up about 2 in the afternoon. My guys call me. Harley Race came down here with a gun. Oh. He tried to light the ring on fire. Whoa. Wow. And the co- had the cops ran, ran him up, and they didn't arrest him. I went, oh, shit. And they told me. Harley said, when I show up, he's going to kill you. Oh. <laughs> so I go across the street and I go to the Rusty Scupper, this bar, right? And I'm not- I was notorious at the time for not kind of like being on time because the matches would start like at seven thirty to eight o'clock, and they wanted you to the building at six thirty. I'd come rolling at about nine thirty, right. you know, after intermission, and I'd have time to put my boots on because I don't want to talk about wrestling. I just want to go do it. Mm. You know, it's like playing guitar or anything. It's like chess. You think two, three moves ahead. And so now I don't need to be at the building early. I damn sure don't want to run into Harley Race. <laughs> you know, this guy's going to kill me. I'm scared to death of him anyway. I've known him since I was a kid. You know? So now I'm across the rusty <laughs> scupper drinking bottles of wine, drinking bottles of wine. And now i got to go to the building, okay? So now I go to the building, and I had to go to the bathroom. Man, my stomach was killing me. So I'm sitting there on the toilet going to the bathroom. And I don't know if you know a wrestler named Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, my God, the fucking king is here. The fucking king is here. He's going to kill you, Hogan. <laughs> Davy Boy comes in and screams at me. I pull my the wrestling yellow tights up. Don't even wipe my ass. <laughs> you know, as fast as I could because I don't want to get caught with my pants down in there. I want to have a fighting chance. I come blowing out of the bathroom. I turn around the corner. He puts that gun right in my face. And we're in Kemper Arena. And he goes, you know what? I should kill you, Hogan, for coming in here and doing this. And this is Harley Race talking to me. And then he puts the gun down. He goes, but I really need a job. Wow. I went, holy shit. You know, holy shit. I shook his hand, brother. And I was a huge fan. Loved the guy to death anyway. (laughs) But that's the type of stuff me and Vince were doing. We are going to other people's territories. And then, you know, you go through, you know, you go to hotel rooms and stuff. You never know when stuff's going to put crap in your bag or stuff like that. We went down to Puerto Rico. But anyway, Harley became a good friend again. That's, and I, that actually does sound believable because that's how Vince pretty much took over wrestling. <laughs> Vince uh, Jr. took over wrestling. He was doing things that at the time was kind of taboo. Like you didn't do that. You didn't go into somebody else's wrestling territory and try to steal from them, steal the, the fan base and everything like that. So I can kind of believe this story. This actually does sound somewhat legitimate y'all let me know if there's some truth to this but this does sound quite believable i knew him before i was a fan he used to come hear the band play and everything but anyway like going down to puerto rico first time we go down to puerto rico i've never been to puerto rico before all the boys tell me how violent it is they cut you they burn you with cigarettes they throw everything at you in puerto rico so i'd never been i didn't need to go but now vince wants to go down to puerto rico and carlos Colon had the territory there for like 30 wow. or 40 years so here we come and I go rolling down to Puerto Rico with Cindy Lauper with me, right? Damn. <laughs> so I go down to Puerto Rico, and we have the match, and we sell at the stadium. Me and Macho Man go back to the room, and we go walk in his room, and his room is trashed. Damn. His room is trashed. And so all of a sudden, I go, oh, my God, let me go to my room. So all of a sudden, I go to my room, and I don't want to say the guy's name, but when I open the, the door... He's sitting there, and because he's still really active, and he's sitting there with a gun. He said, "If you ever come back here, I'm gonna kill you." I said, okay, that, I was going back to Tampa. I hauled ass to the airport. I got on an Eastern Airlines flight, the last one out of town, and flew to L.A. I was supposed to be going home to Tampa. Damn. About four months later, Bruiser Brody goes down there, has a little argument. The Booker calls him into the shower, cuts his throat, and kills him. Jesus Christ. So that's down there in Puerto Rico. 
Jeez. And it's crazy because they just went to Puerto Rico recently and it's one of the best crowd experiences of all time in WWE history. <laughs> they literally had one of the best crowds <laughs> for uh, pay-per-view or PLE, whatever you want to call this year. There's Backlash is one of the best crowds. It's one of the best pay-per-views WWE has put on this year. So, wow. If this is true, if what he's saying is true, that's holy. It was a different time back then, bro. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't know if you guys ever heard the Brody story. The yeah, promoter that... cut his throat and Well, he was the him? booker. He was one of the invaders, um, Rodriguez. And uh, Brody was kind of hard to do business with in the ring. He's really stiff and would beat the shit out of you. He wouldn't put anybody over. And he was, you know, he was a big, big man, six foot eight, 330 pounds in crazy shape. And, you know, they wanted to beat him. He was, nah, not tonight, brother. You know? Wow. So after the match, oh. I said, hey, Jose wants to talk to you in the shower. Brody went walking in the shower. He jumped him, cut his throat, and died right there. And all the wrestlers that saw it were afraid to go back and testify. Damn. So that's. So it, it, it can get crazy. <laughs> that's about as crazy as it yeah. gets. Holy, nah. It, <laughs> if that's true, which, once again, part of me do believe there's some truth to that. Because back then it was different. You, it, it, Vince Jr., obviously the Vince we know today, was doing things his father wasn't doing. No one was really stepping on the toes of other territories. But Vince didn't care. And that that's a dangerous game, especially back then. It was, whoo, holy. That was insane. But quite interesting, man. There was actually some interesting conversations that was had in uh, all these clips or whatnot. But yeah, man, I, hey, I don't know what's true, what's not, but I do believe that last story has some type of truth to it. And definitely the Hulk Hogan stealing certain stuff, that makes total sense. A lot of people did back in the day. It, it's, it does not exclude Hulk Hogan either. So comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys know some of the stories that Hulk Hogan was talking about? Specifically the territory stuff. For those who was around for that time. Because I know I have we have um, some older people that have you know been around for the territory days of wrestling and stuff like that. Is there some truth to things we get really personal and damn near deadly if one territory tried to take over another territory did a show in another wrestling company's territory let me know how truthful that is because i do believe there's some truth to what hulk, hulk hogan was saying but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see you on next one peace